In this video lesson, we look at Newton's universe, Olber's paradox, and Big Bang theory. In the late 1700s, early 1800s, it was Sir Isaac Newton that held the convincing description of the universe. He said it was infinite. Any direction you looked, stars extended out to infinity. Uh, the space was uniformly filled with stars. And lastly, that uh, the universe was static, that it wasn't moving. And most, most convincingly, he thought it was infinite because without an infinite universe, the universe would collapse under its own gravitational force. In 1823, German astronomer Heinrich Olber used Newton's model to develop a paradox and, and show that uh, Newton's theory of the universe was indeed impossible. Olber started off with Newton's idea that the universe is uniform. So here he lets n represent the number of stars per meter cubed. Uh, this of course would be a very small number indeed. Let's imagine a spherical shell of thickness t and distance d away from the earth and that shell is filled with stars and we can think of the brightness of any star given by its luminosity and its distance from earth. So we'll let capital N represent the total number of stars in the shell and if that's the case then uh, n equals capital N equals small n times 4 pi d squared times t. Now that last part, 4 pi d squared times t, would be the volume of that spherical shell. So we're going to work out the combined brightness of all the stars in that shell. If, if the luminosity, the average luminosity is given by L average, then the brightness of the shell is capital N times L average over 4 pi d squared. And so we can simplify that. As, as, uh, as we see here. And so the brightness of the shell is small n times t times the average luminosity. I'll left, I've left that out. I'll add that in a second. Now remember, Newton said the universe was infinite. We've got a lot of shells to add up here. If we had a million shells, then the brightness of those million shells would be a million times n times t times the average luminosity. If we had a billion shells, it would be a billion times n times t times the average luminosity, and so on. If we had an infinite number of shells, then of course the brightness would approach infinity. So this was Olber's paradox, and that is, uh, if the universe is infinite, then the brightness would also be infinity from that infinite number of stars, and therefore the night sky should be bright, it shouldn't be dark at night. Using some sound logic and Newton's own model of the universe, Olber had built a convincing paradox and proved that Newton's idea of the universe, infinite and static, could not be true. In 1929, Sir Edwin Hubble pointed a powerful, powerful at the time, telescope up at the skies and looked at stars and star clusters and galaxies. He would make a discovery that would profoundly change the understanding of our universe. Analyzing the light coming from these galaxies, he recognized uh, certain elements that he'd observed on Earth and their spectral signatures. But what was different now was the spectral lines, both emission and absorption lines, uh, for these elements seemed to be shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. His conclusion, these galaxies were all moving away from Earth. Of course, it was the Doppler effect that was responsible for this redshift. So all these galaxies were moving away from Earth. And in fact, there's no reason to expect that it was Earth that's the center of all this movement. In fact, we've made this mistake before, thinking that the Sun and the planets all revolved around Earth. So Hubble and, and the astronomers at the time began to deduce that um, that all these galaxies, including the Milky Way, must be moving away from one another. And if we backed up the timeline, moved those galaxies back, one would expect that all those galaxies would have existed way back at the beginning of time at a single point. And that point is called the singularity. And that was the birth of the 
the theory that is known now as Big Bang Theory. This idea that everything in the universe started at a single point called the singularity helps explain Olber's paradox. So that singularity, infinite density, infinite temperature, and space expands outwards. That, that's something greater than the speed of light. And of course that doesn't violate Einstein's special theory because there's no space in front of that leading edge. So we're there's no uh, speed of light to be violated here. Here's how Big Bang Theory explains Olber's apparent paradox. With all this matter, all these galaxies starting at a single point, all moving away from each other, we get redshift. Uh, some, many of the galaxies are moving so fast that the redshift actually shifts their light outside of the visible spectrum into the infrared and, and beyond the infrared. So a lot of these stars are not going to contribute to the light that we see that we should see at night according according to Olber and therefore Big Bang theory accounts for why the sky is in fact dark at night and fixes Olber's paradox. Let's go through a summary. Number 1, Newton's model of the universe. Three pieces here. One that it is infinite, had to be otherwise it would collapse under its own gravitational force, that it's static and that it's uniform, so about constant number of stars per unit volume. Back in 1823, Olber came up, used a little logic and came up with this idea, why is the, the night sky dark? It shouldn't be. Olber's paradox. It wasn't until about 100 years later with uh, Sir Edwin Hubble that the paradox was, was uh, fixed, corrected. It was Hubble through the Doppler effect that it discovered that indeed the universe was expanding. Other scientists put together, contributed to what is known today as the Big Bang Theory. And three pieces here that uh, everything started at a single point called the singularity, that the universe is indeed finite, and that is expanding. Practice problem number one. Which one of the following is not consistent with Newton's universe? The universe is infinite. The universe is static, the universe is uniform, the universe is expanding. Pause your viewer and try this question. B and D are mutually exclusive here, so that should tip us off looking carefully at one of these two. Newton's model of the universe included infinite, static, and uniform, so A, B, and C are consistent. Our answer here is D. The universe is expanding as part of Big Bang Theory. And number two, which one of the following helps to rectify Olber's paradox? Universe is uniform, the universe is expanding, universe is infinite, or universe is static? Pause your viewer and try this question. Here's an electromagnetic wave depicting visible light. If the universe is expanding, that waveform will be stretched out with expanding space turning the visible light into perhaps infrared or microwave radiation, not visible. A dark night sky because of the expanding universe. Our answer is B.